Welcome to the Music Teachers in International Schools podcast, where we explore music education in the unique context of international schools. Now, international schools are vibrant spaces for music education provision, and this podcast aims to support music teachers who often find themselves living and working in quite isolated communities. I'm your host, Chris Colmer, founder of the MTIIS community and beginner orchestra. And today I have Ollie Tunma on the show. Now, I first came across Ollie during a time of despair during COVID lockdowns. Um, body percussion was proving to be a hit with my primary school students during online learning. And Ollie brought the goods with his free body percussion, follow along, play along videos. Um, now, Ollie is a drummer, a percussionist, an educator, and the director of Beat Goes On, an organization that provides resources and workshops for students and teachers based primarily around body percussion and other percussion contexts. Now, as a former cast member of the London and European tour cast of Stomp, I'm sure we've all heard of that, or if we haven't, we've got to check it out, and their sister show, The Lost and Found Orchestra, Ollie knows a thing or two about rhythm and percussion. So Ollie, thanks for joining me on the podcast. Uh, it's great to finally be chatting with you. It's lovely to be here. Great to chat to you too. Now, I've been referencing this thing, body percussion, a lot in that intro. What is body percussion? Let's start with that. And why might we think it's a good thing for us international school music teachers to be teaching? Wow. Okay. There's a big one to start. So body percussion, or some people call it body music, uh, which kind of include the kind of the, the, the vocal aspects, but I tend to focus on the kind of purely percussive aspects, but it's, um, it's generally thought of as the, the oldest form of human communication. You know, we've been doing it before we could, you know, kind of before everything, we were kind of beating our chest, we were clapping, we were stomping and it's become, um, you know, part of uh, cultures around the world. Um, you know, we have body percussion, very famous examples such as stomp um, and, and other examples around the world, but also obviously flamenco dancing and gumboot dancing and countless other examples of body percussion around the world. Um, and in terms of a kind of use within the classroom, um, because we all have a body, we all have an instrument straight away. Um, and, you know, since we're babies and toddlers, we're clapping, we're stomping, we're kind of tapping our legs, tapping our arms, that kind of thing. So it's very immediately accessible. Um, as you kind of noted during lockdown, it kind of became one of the few kinds of music making that you could actually do. Apart from the technology of actually accessing the lesson, you you didn't need any further instruments or technology so you could clap you could tap along you can have composition going on you can have performance going on you can have kind of very very simple stuff um due, and then going on to very 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 advanced stuff such as stump and kind of all the other kind of more uh, kind of advanced expert level things so there's a wide range of um kind of progression levels to aim for you can involve music from cultures from all over the world and of course participant ideas very very well so um yeah it's incredibly malleable and adaptable and very 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 accessible and hopefully very exciting tell us a bit about stomp because as i said some of us will have heard of it hopefully a lot of us but um what is stomp just give us a bit of a background and then also maybe a bit more of a background uh, around you as a musician and a music educator. Sure. So Stomp is a theatre show originally from Brighton in the UK. Um, it started off as kind of a busking thing, basically, and it kind of evolved into a theatre show out of that. But it's um, it's a combination of rhythm and movement and comedy. Um, I say rhythm rather than drumming. There is no instruments uh, in the show at all. There's also no speaking. There's the odd grunt and the odd... Oi, oi. But mm. other than that, there's no language. It's purely the language of rhythm and visual comedy and movement. Um, and the pe pe people may be kind of get memories jogged perhaps by brooms stuff they do or the bins stuff they yes. do everyday objects in a rhythmic and, and kind of comedic way um but the, yeah the rhythm is it can be um incredibly uh, sophisticated and very very well choreographed by um the two founders of the show luke creswell and steve mcnicholas um and yeah so i was lucky enough to as you said be in the the london show and the european tour and also their sister show the lost and found orchestra which is kind of um it's kind of stomp goes symphonic 
So hmm. uh, it's a completely different show to Stomp, but written by the same two guys. Um, and uh, it was instead of having a violin section, they had bowed saws. So you know, um, so you know, when you get saws and you get a, a kind of a violin or a cello bow, and you can change the pitch by bending the saw. They had that as a whole section, and they had these uh, kind of wind instruments called squonkophones, which were kind <laughs> of basically balloons um, placed over uh, plastic tubes, and the plastic tubes were different lengths. And when you blew into the tubes, it made this kind of squonker sound squonker and there was yeah and they created very very kind of um beautiful at times and very very percussive rhythms by the different um different lengths of the pipes going on with that one and they created a whole show about it and you can see lots of that online we actually one of the first uh kind of gigs i did with that was we came to the the sydney uh festival and i think broke box office records at the sydney opera house so that was good fun so um that's that was the kind of the stomp thing and so i actually started off with stomp as a as a workshop facilitator doing workshops around schools and then um the guy leading that, a guy called Dave Gallagher, he'd already been in the show, and so there was a few of us, and we were kind of saying, "Well, we've got a load, we've got a, vi a van full of brooms and basketballs, and things. can you teach us some of the show?" This is pre to doing it, and I'd seen the show, but um, he was like, "Yeah." So we, I kind of learnt most of the show in school car parks, which was um, kind of quite rock and roll anyway. Yeah. And then basically, Luke and Steve heard that we'd been learning the show, so they were like, "Do you want to be in the show?" And I was like. Having seen the show as a teenager and being totally mesmerised and inspired, I then got to be in it. So, uh, yeah, absolute life dream. Was the first time, just jumping in there, was the first time you saw the show live or did you see the DVDs? I just remember the DVDs at some point. Very much live. Um, yeah. I think I saw it live before the DVD ever came out. So I think I saw it probably first about 1994. I think it was when they, again, broke box of his records at the Royal Festival Hall. Um, and uh, yeah, so amazing. And, uh, and actually, it was I remember seeing a few times at the Dome in Brighton. And it being their kind of home show that had a kind of extra special kind of energy to it. So, yeah, it was uh, great fun. And then kind of since then, obviously, the the Stomp Association has really, really kind of obviously helped me not only as a musician, as a performer, but also inevitably the association with that. When people think body percussion, they don't always know kind of what you mean. But when you say, you know, like Stomp do, and they're like, ah, so they kind of have a bit of an inkling. Um, I mean, obviously, Stomp didn't invent body percussion, but kind of people have a kind of a that modern reference to kind of relate it to and they obviously develop their own kind of style of it and then kind of combined with i uh, i i've been playing with a samba band in brighton called carnival collective um since about 2001 and uh th through them i kind of built up my knowledge of samba and i've been studying samba at uni as well with a guy called sam alexander but kind of through them i started doing samba workshops and then i was also a secondary music teacher for a couple of years in north london and so at that point i was like well i'm bringing all this stuff together i'd already done stomp by that point and uh so then set up beat goes on and the rest as they say is history <laughs> um just quickly back to uni days and musician uh background so was that did you study percussion at uni yeah yeah i very much went through i was i was kind of did music as gcse and a level um and i, I also kind of was lucky enough to have kind of have uh, private drum and percussion lessons through the music service and private lessons and then studied music performance at kingston university and there yeah this guy sam alexander who um, i kind of discovered is a bit of a kind of um nationally and internationally regarded authority on afro-brazilian percussion so it was basically kind of me and him uh, lots of lots he'd often do kind of quite fun assemblies at the at the freshers kind of uh, opening week and then they realized that all the all the lessons may be like first thing on a monday morning so i basically had everyone else's lessons because i was like i'm doing this so it was just like, me and sam we've been kind of mates ever since and also through him i joined london school of samba and that's kind of who i then went to kind of i did the rio carnival in 2001 and so kind of that was kind of through london school of samba connections so uh yeah all kind of one thing led to another but um yeah sam was the the kind of the entry route into samba for me and mm. uh very much kind of where i kind of developed percussively from then on so Beat Goes On, as I said in the intro, is an organization providing resources, workshops, etc. What led you to actually start Beat Goes On? Well, I was doing workshops as Ollie, and then I can't remember, I think somebody, there was an organization that said, we kind of only really work with organizations rather than individuals. And I was like, right, okay. And then I met somebody who, who was a one woman company, a one person company, and I was like, ah, Perhaps I can do that. So I bet on the on the back of my Ollie Tunma business card, I had and the beat goes on. So I just took that. 
Um, so I became Beat Goes On, and and then I approached the same organization. They were like, um, Beat Goes On would love to work with you. Yes, of course. Um, so it's like, eh, but, but actually since then, Beat Goes On is very much more than just me. We are a team of, uh, I think at the moment, 10 facilitators, all who have kind of lo located um, mostly around the UK, but also sometimes internationally, uh, who have their own kind of specialisms as well. So uh, yeah, we've become a kind of, uh, yes, very, very much more than just the Ollie show. Mm. And let's talk about international schools, because most of our listeners are going to be in international schools all over the world. How can, uh, how have you rather, let's start with that. How have you worked with international schools so far? So this is where I need to refer to notes because the list is getting quite long. <laughs> Throughout Europe, um, we've done a number of conferences um, with uh, COBIS, the, the Council of British International Schools, with the King's Academy group of schools in Spain. Online, especially, certainly during lockdown, we work with Fabicia. Um, we did some stuff for the International Music Education Summit, who were based in the US. I was one of the keynotes at the Latin American Heads Conference in Sao Paulo. Mm. We were in Beijing for the 798 Arts Festival in Beijing, in China. Um, we were at uh, British Schools in the Middle East's inaugural Art and Music Conference in Dubai. Um, I was the keynote at Musical Futures Big Gig in Melbourne. Um, we had a, I had a residency at the North London Collegiate School in Jeju Island, South Korea. And uh, one of our other facilitators is going to be out in Q8. So, uh, wow. yeah. Tell us a memory, like one of your, I don't know, favorite memories, experiences, uh, having had worked with an international school or lots of international schools. One thing that's lovely is um, because, I mean, body percussion certainly, but also all kinds of percussion, they're so immediately accessible. Um, we've often had things... Um, a couple of times it sprang, sprang to mind um, when you asked me this in terms of when we were at the uh, conference in Madrid, again, for the, for the King's Academy group, um, the, the, yeah, the King's College group, sorry, and the COBIS conference I did in Athens, impromptu percussion jams started. Um, we just came out, everyone had just finished a kind of just a kind of a 30 person session and we were like, should we just take loads of drums and or boom whackers and whatever else we've got to hand and basketballs and everyone else can body percuss? And in both situations, we ended up with a kind of a hundred plus people percussion jam. And it was lovely because I was, we kind of built on what we'd done in the session and people that weren't in the session were able to pick up just one of the lines very, very quickly. Then they were actually adding their own ideas and their own movement to things. So I was kind of facilitating it, but I was like, children run free right with this was adults but you yeah. know it's like go for it just you know add your own thing and and i was like right you guys you keep going everyone listen to these guys we're going to join them with what they're doing i hadn't taught them that they come up with them by themselves so it kind of very very organically became this really kind of mass uh kind of percussion jams which um is yeah that kind of stay my head love that like, where's this come from it's like i don't know you guys did it It was great so um yeah good fun love it that sounds so good let's go to well actually it's it's made me want you to do some body percussion for us live on the podcast. I just, I don't know. I didn't prep you for this at all. That's all right. But That's all right. Just in case, I just think it would sound really cool. Could you perform something and uh, let's hear like, what's a, what's a, I don't know, maybe a favorite. Okay. Lovely. Well, I guess I, in all honesty, I, I don't have a favorite, but I'm quite, I like about body percussion. Is you, there's the, the standy uppy jumpy aroundy stompy clappy stuff. Yeah, but there's also kind of more kind of chest and clicky clappy stuff, which is more sitting down. And this is sometimes what I do if I've got kind of quite a, maybe a kind of a ninety minute or two hour session, and the participants they might be getting a little bit tired and go right, let's go over the stompy bit again. And they're like, oh, can we just have a breather? It's like, well, we can have a breather, but let's do it in a fun percussive way. So I teach them. I might teach them something along these lines. A one, two, here I go. Like that yes love it <laughs> we should have just done a whole podcast on that just you doing percussion patterns it's all good it's often I it, sometimes i'll introduce the uh the kind of mouth sounds early on in the session and sometimes i'll save it for when i do a, a groove that features it and uh, where did that come from and then i'll show them how it's done um and you know some people can do it straight away others it takes a little bit longer to do but they'll all get there in the end but it's um it can be nice to kind of save a little bit for the performancey bit of the workshop and the 
what was that? One of my favorite ones that I've been doing lately is the the multiple finger click. Where you oh, yeah. Wow. You've got it down. Yeah. And also, I know uh, there's something to kind of do almost like the, like the, the Willie and Tell Overture with finger clicks. So that Go on. Yeah. I think I can kind of do, yeah, like, so there's one, two, three, four. Well, five, in fact. Yeah, that's individual fingers. But uh, yeah, I know some people, like, they literally just practice that for hours and hours and hours. And it's like really clean and really precise and fair play. So nice. So we've heard a little bit about how you've worked with international schools. We've heard a bit of your body percussion. If someone wants to work with you, I think people will be wondering about this straight away. Like they want to get you into their international school or work with you online or anything. How, how, do, they, how do they get in touch with you or how can they work with you? What are some of the options? There's a few routes. So first of all, on the website, we've got lots of free resources. We've got a junk percussion guide. We've got lots of samba rhythm grids. Um, we've got uh, recently released, we've got a body percussion scheme of work. Um, I'm kind of calling it that because I didn't really know. It's, it, it, it's a very adaptable resource. It's free. It draws on my body percussion book, Body Beats. Massive plug for you there. Mm -hmm. um, so Body Beats is a book that I released literally weeks before lockdown started it. I released it at the Music and Drama Education Expo, which is a big free uh, CPD music and drama event in the UK. Uh, I released it there and that was the beginning, that was March 20, uh, uh, 2020. And then lockdown in the UK happened at the end of March 2020. So uh, it was a bit like, whoa. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's, there's two elements there. There's the body percussion scheme of work, which is free. It draws upon the videos and the rhythm grids that I have in Body Beats and also has lots of free stuff, videos and other rhythm grids as well that you can kind of link to. And I've just downloaded, just sorry to jump in. I've downloaded it and I can see it says key stages one to four. It sounds like you've pretty much got the whole most of the school covered there as well yeah and it's kind of it does show a natural progression from one to the other and it draws upon um, afro-brazilian rhythms indian doll rhythms west african percussion rhythms um stomp there's some stepping there the kind of african-american uh, kind of rhythmic dance developed in the states there's some gumboot dancing there so there's various bits and bobs and there's i think the, the way it kind of ties in and and one way that kind of I think came to light really during online stuff is that body percussion is more than just a warm up. I know lots of people quite understandably use body percussion as a warm up. And then, right, we've done that as a warm up. Now we're going to go and start using instruments. And I think during online, they realized, oh, we can't do that. So actually, we've got to kind of get into and that. And hopefully the, 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 the online stuff we released during lockdown kind of showed some of the ways that you can do that. There was kind of development of performance skills, doing triplets and, um, and other kind of rudiments as body percussion and developments of composition ideas, um, drawing upon all the all the kind of the musical cultures that you've normally kind of played with, as it were, kind of regular instruments, but purely through body percussion. And actually, when I teach, for example, samba, I'll teach kind of the rhythm of the words and I'll teach the words as body percussion first so that when they get onto the instruments, they already know what the rhythm is first rather than trying to learn the rhythm and the playing technique at the same time. So, you know, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a logical progression that way. But if you're focusing on the body percussion, then you can really, you know, you can really, really develop it. And obviously, I, I think some people kind of I, could, I, I kind of had to kind of comment on some people saying, well, body percussion, it is just a warm up. And where else can it go in terms of an expert level? Well, you've got stomp around and you've got countless other examples, you know, kind of I know blue man group do body mm. as well you had bobby mcferrin you've got cultures all around the world of, of you know stuff that's been going on for centuries you know that kind of thing and, and gumboot and that kind of thing so you know you can tell where it can go when you you know really really want to get to expert levels so we've got our scheme of work we've got body beats we've got the free stuff but obviously now in person <laughs> conferences and workshops are very much available and uh, staff often kind of ask me what's the kind of the best kind of CPD or PD uh, mm. that we can offer and I always suggest that we do it within a context of a workshop so we go in we're teaching students with the staff being there and then they're observing us delivering the sessions and then as part of that we get the staff to come in and they might make mistakes with it and that's part of learning that's you know growth mindset and you know and for, but we say right well what went well what could we do differently? And while they're going on, the students are hopefully having a fun, measurable, musical, creative time, but the staff are very much 
they're not just watching and going, oh, I might practice this next week. They're doing it there and then. And then we can, you know, it can be a collaborative experience. It means that they can carry on and take the work directly after we've gone. And it so it becomes, you know, just a more beneficial thing all around. Fantastic. And to book you in, say someone's yes. listening and they want to book you in, what's the best way? Well, it's via the website, which is beatgoeson.co.uk. And there's a contact page. You can also email us info at beatgoeson.co.uk. Um, but and all the emails come to me. So I kind of uh, work out who's going to be where. And if it's not going to be me, it's going to be one of our other brilliant facilitators. But um, that's the best way to get in touch. Mm. Um, but I think it's also kind of worth saying, I know that, you know, budgets can always, you know, be an issue. And uh, we're always kind of trying to kind of make things work, make, you know, whatever the context is. So, you know, get in touch. It, it, you know, we'll, we'll always try to kind of make something happen. But I think kind of, I think internationally, as you said, in terms of wherever you are in the world, one person music departments can be quite isolating. Um, and even if it's just a kind of a chat over the phone or a kind of an online one-to-one -one or us working in person, we, we're quite, we're really, really keen to kind of make those connections and support teachers and students however we can. Yeah. And something I've heard uh, some schools doing recently is collaborating, connecting and reaching out to someone like you and saying, hey, can you come to, I don't know, let's just say Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam and just come for a week and go through a few schools at once. And so it just makes it more worthwhile for everyone. And we sort of can collaborate a bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for example, when I'm off to Canada on Wednesday and as well as the conference I'm doing, I'm doing a mini workshop tour. So I'm visiting three, three cities um, in the state. And it means that it's not just the conference because I think conferences can be quite hard for teachers sometimes to make, because obviously not only does it cost money, but they're also got to kind of sort out cover. If mm. I come to them, then it's they they're just working out me me getting there and then it can happen and also the students can have an experience as well so yeah mini workshop tours are, are a great way of doing it and obviously kind of travel costs can be shared and that kind of thing exactly another thing we're doing uh, in canada is a kind of a sideline i have which is samba -oki which is mass karaoke sing-along with a live samba band. Um, it is as silly as it sounds. You can check examples of that out on sambaroki.com. It's basically spelled samba and then O-K-E. So samba Oki. <laughs> that sounds crazy. It's good fun. It's good fun. Um, the version of it we're doing in Canada, we, we would have had, I think, a total of four hours rehearsal, two of which have been online. Um, and we're having a two hour in-person rehearsal the evening before the gig. We're doing six tunes. We've got a bit of Whitney going on. We've got a bit of Outcast, a bit of Queen. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's more a kind of a nostalgia visit. Um, but then, yeah, you get your kind of favourite kind of karaoke sing-alongs. Um, but in this, and then put a samba band to it. But in this case, all the, all the musicians are going to be Canadian teachers. So it uh, should be quite, quite a bit of fun. It obviously gets every, everyone sings. It's not one person nervously on a mic. Everyone's singing. So it's, um, yeah, it's good fun. Sam Baroque, check it out. You've got me totally intrigued. I can, I can barely picture it. One of my favourite ones, actually, is, um, is we do a version of uh, Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. And we start off with a little kind of um, a kind of samba kind of call and response. So we have like, and the audience are kind of playing along, and we kind of show them how to do it. And after one of them, we kind of like, yeah, yeah, and then we suddenly have ding, 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 so yeah, and it turns into mass kind of Rio style samba uh, Nirvana. So what's not to like? It's good fun. Those videos that you did during the lockdown phase, are they easy to access? Are they all on the website or can we find them? Yes, we still have six, uh, sorry, three and a half hours of uh, YouTube uh, online resources, which is if you just Google YouTube Ollie Tunma or YouTube Beat Goes On, it'll come up. Some of them, I mean, very obviously they were done live. They were done live for that context. Yeah. So. I've kind of got references going on to people who were watching at the time. It's very much of that time, but the content is still there. Um, so yeah, that's very much still available to watch. Cool. Great, Ollie. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground, lots of food for thought for listeners. Was there anything else that we might've missed you wanted to share with us? I think we're good. I mean, other than just, you know, get in touch. Um, I always say when I ever do uh, either online or in-person sessions that this is very much the beginning of, you know, a relationship, working relationship we can have. We're always up for it. You know, if there's no budget, there's no budget and we'll make something happen anyway. You know, and currently, you know, music is, is not the highest priority in most, you know, government things. 
And we're just trying to, you know, support people however we can, whether it's through kind of th there's some free stuff. If the free stuff doesn't have as much as you want it to, we can work out how we can develop the free stuff or kind of lead on ideas from that. Have, have a chat, to, you know, ask us questions. What can we do to support you in whatever context? And we'll, we'll you know, try to you know, support you however we can. Thanks so much for your time, Ollie. All the best with the trip to Canada. And we really look forward to hearing where, uh, you know, how you're getting connected with some international schools moving forward. Always, you know, stay in touch, um, reach out on our Facebook group, uh, LinkedIn as well. And um, once again, Ollie, thanks so much for your energy and your ideas. No worries at all. Lovely to chat to you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Music Teachers in International Schools podcast. Listen to other episodes by visiting mtiis.com or learn more about our community on Facebook by simply searching for Music Teachers in International Schools. If you know someone who you think I should get on the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. You can find me at chriskulma.com, C-H-R-I-S-K-O-E-L-M-A.com. See you next time.